Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope and it's a privilege to have you join us today as we talk about another reason why it's a good thing to live in Central Florida. Aren't you glad you live in this beautiful region? And it's a season where we can enjoy not only the beautiful weather, but we have the opportunity to understand that we have a God that is at work in Central Florida. And it's the reason why this program exists to bring joy to your heart because of what God is doing in our region. If you're a regular viewer, thanks for joining us today. If you're a brand new viewer, this program is just dedicated to the purpose of letting you know good things that are happening right here in Central Florida. It's my privilege today to welcome a friend of mine. I, I have the privilege of knowing lots of wonderful people, but there's none finer than Paul Benjamin. Paul, oh. welcome to Joy in Our Town. Oh, thank you, George. I am delighted. Uh, when I heard that you were going to be on the program and what you were doing at the Central Florida Dream Center, it is an amazing ministry that I am so happy that TBN wants to share with our viewers. And, and while they... Uh, they don't know maybe you exist. When they're through, they're going to want to connect with you. Now, to me, before we start talking about what we do, it's important to let people know who you are. So how did you get to Central Florida? What was your journey to get us here? Well, I drove on I-4. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, coming from Brooklyn, New York, my dad passed it in, in Brooklyn and uh, wanted to get our family into a better environment in um, Orlando. We came here for a vacation, fell in love with the place, not to mention the temperature is beautiful. Yeah. And um, looking back at the year we left New York, we had 36 snowstorms. Wow. We had to buy snow, we had to buy salt from Pennsylvania that year, 70 billion tons or something <laughs> new. But, um, but after ministering in New York, we, we felt that the need to come here and do a work here. When you, when you came, it was, was it for church or was it because you had a specific vision that you believed God was sending you here? Well, I was mentoring men and youth in, in uh, Brooklyn and coming here was for family, but then all was in the back of my mind was ministry, yeah. extending that outreach to men and, and the fatherless here in Orlando. You, you took up residence in Sanford, which is just a little north of, our, of, of Orlando proper, but mm -hmm. it's all Orlando. It's all Central Florida, right, oh in the yeah. process. Oh yeah. um, and you started a ministry. Tell us about Central Florida Dream Center. Well, the Central Florida Dream Center is a spinoff of what I started back in 95, which is Men in Action. Okay. At that point, we had 24 million fatherless youth. And the goal was to reach, teach, and equip and place 10 million men in the lives of fatherless youth. First teaching men how to be godly men, godly husbands, and then um, godly fathers, but then mentors to the fatherless. So we first have to equip the men because the very word family comes from the word father. So if the men goes, so goes the family. So we need to get men to solidify. So that's how we got started. So this passion to, to work with men but ultimately the impact of a man is his family leads us to really the focus of our discussion because mm -hmm. I know your heart, but I want our viewers to hear your heart. It starts with the fact that we live in urban areas. Why is there so much crime in our schools and our community today? Why do you think there's such a, a, a plethora of issues and that are going on? Is it because of the family? Yes. Um, the Bible says if you want to get access to the home, you're first buying the strong man. Well, today in our, in our society, there are no men in the homes. In the inner city, we have nine out of 10 kids without dads. In suburbia, we have five or six kids without dads. And um, statistics shows when the dad is out of the picture, a boy is more likely three to 400% more likely to be involved in crime and violence. And, and the girls are more 200% more likely to be promiscuous before the age of 13. So the role that a father plays is very pivotal in the lives of the family. Uh, a few months back, um, we all know that Sanford has gone through, like again, many other cities, has gone through racial issues where there has been death, crime, and destruction in the midst of it. You, you allowed an event to drive you to take some action. Tell, tell us about that, th this passion to do something. What, you've watched it and you said something has to be done. Yeah, we had um, the tragedy that has, has rocked our nation as we know the Trayvon Martin shooting. 
Um, the behind the scenes story that most people don't know, it happened 500 yards from my front door in a suburban community. And um, lo and behold, our projects next to where the Dream Center was, um, they closed that down and people began to get vouchers to go and live pretty much where the landlords will accept them. And some of them moved into the neighborhood next to me and crime began to explode and then Zimmerman began to protect his neighborhood and then the rest is history. But that challenged me now to mobilize the suburban churches and the urban churches to work together to begin mentoring these fatherless youth that are coming from our inner cities and our suburban communities. And, and I commend you because you were able to bring pastors and the mayor together. We have a clip I want to show right now, a clip that will uh, help our viewers to understand your passion and why you started that. Would you watch this clip and you'll hear Paul's heart as it relates to what our community heard in trying to mobilize the body of Christ, the community, to take action against those uh, that are causing violence in the inner city. Watch this. We're not going to say we're going to relegate this back to the government. This is our responsibility to stand in the gap, to come out from behind the pulpit and engage in our community. And when I drive in inner cities and I see five or ten churches on the same block, and then I see the crime in that same community, are the highest in the county, it is almost synonymous in saying, well, is their crime is relational to the amount of churches or is it because of the lack of influence? It was a three-pronged initiative, which is spiritual, social, and economic. Spiritual, we want to turn the hearts back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This, so we want to be clear, that is not another God. It is the real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we want to turn their hearts back to ministering socially and address our social ills in the community. But then third, economic. We want to provide jobs. We want to provide entrepreneurial activities. Let these kids also learn how to start a business. Paul, I hear two things out of your conversation there. Number one, the church has to get involved mm -hmm. if it's, there's going to be change. And then I want you to take a moment and talk about those three initiatives. So your passion was to mobilize the church. Is the church stepping up to the plate? It's, it's slow in coming, but um, there's a slow response. But we um, just had one of our key large suburban churches in Sanford just stepped up to the plate and adopted an inner city pastor and their church. And together we will begin to partner to be establish what we call miniature life centers, which are really after school programs in the urban community, because typically those churches are closed six days a week. So now we will establish after-school programs to mitigate the problems spiritually, socially, and economically to make sure we provide spiritual guidance, social impact, but also economic renewal to provide jobs and entrepreneurship in those communities where they're lower economically. Now we want to bring them up. So when the, the water rises, the boat will rise. I'm sure there, we have viewers that right now are saying, you know what, I, my heart is responding to this. Uh, what could they do within their own local church to, to uh, cause an initial response of their pastor? What would you encourage them to do if they wanted to see more of their congregation take and get involved? Well, they can go on our website and, and get involved and get the information. They can invite me out to share the vision with their local pastor and their church to get involved. But we want to bring this into all the different churches that are irrelevant to most of their community. We need the church to begin to take ownership. Within every church, there, there's always a generation of single moms within that congregation. And we need to start, the Bible says, start in Jerusalem, in your own home, so they can call us, get involved, sign up to be trained as a mentor, to, to be more transformative in their local congregation, wherever they serve. Yeah. Um, you got the mayor involved in this process. And uh, I, I want to show one more clip because the mayor, Jeff Triplett, who is still there, he's, he continues to have feel the pressure of all of this event, does he not? Oh, yeah. A matter of fact, um, the mayor um, last year was held up at gunpoint by a 15 and a 17-year-old in Sanford, um, a fatherless youth again. And so this just brings to light the need for men to stand in the gap and families to stand in the gap and mentor this generation. Uh, 
folk, watch this clip because now you're going to hear politics. You're going to hear the mayor of Sanford talk about the need for people to get involved in this. Watch this clip. I lost faith. I, I'll be honest with you, over the last 18 months, I lost a lot of faith. I met a lot of uh, men that said that they were of God and would say one thing to your face and another thing when the camera was on them. And I've struggled with some of those conversations and some of those actions. And uh, Pastor Benjamin reached out to me and was talking about his vision with Promise Keepers, Harvest Time International, and the Dream Center, and what he his thoughts were for the mayors of, of this great nation to step forward and say, the time is now, the change is now. Fatherlessness in our society is the root of what the problems are go that are that are happening at this point in time. And I fell in love with the message, and I think I found a little bit of God again through Him. Well, Paul, uh, that last statement, you brought God back to a mayor. That, that's an amazing, and I applaud you. And you in this community need to be applauding uh, Paul Benjamin and the Dream Center for what you're doing. Let me ask, is that beginning to make a difference in the Sanford community? Yes, we're beginning to see churches beginning to work together. We have our ministers fellowship that we meet monthly. We have government officials there. We have business officials. We're really um, comprehensively approaching and taking ownership of our city. And so that ultimately is the only way we're going to change, is it not? I that's, mean, that's we, I think that a lot of people say, well, that, that's a problem for Sanford or that's a problem for other urban areas, when in fact the problem is everywhere we find ourselves. Um, again, if they want to get involved, they just go to your website, correct? Give us the web address that they would go to. They go to www.cfdreamcenter.org. So that's where you go. And, folk, we want you to go there because if you want to make a difference, if you want to step up in your congregation, if you want to invite Paul Benjamin to be a part of uh, his vision to be brought to your congregation and introduce him to your pastor, I encourage you to go there because this is the only way we're going to see our community changed. It's why there's joy in our town. Because of people like you, Paul Benjamin, thank you so very much for what you're doing. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back. We're going to talk about how we can take now the next steps because we've not just talked about the problem. We want to talk about the solution. You stay with us. We'll be right back. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Ay, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Mm -hmm. That PSA is what it's all about, isn't it, Paul? It's just taking a moment for a father to get involved in the midst of the process. Amen. The importance of how to be a good father. You know, I would, I just sort of think that, honestly, people would assume that they understand, but the longer I've lived in our culture, I realize if you don't have a father or you've not been in a family, and you're talking about nine out of 10 kids not having fathers, we don't know how to be fathers. So how important is it and what are you encouraging men that are viewing this program today to do to be able to step up and be the kind of dad that their sons and their daughters need? Well, the, the challenge is great because um, I've been talking about a challenge, but until I saw it for myself back in 2000 when we had a Promise Keepers event here in Orlando and the announcement was made, we had 15,000 men and we were challenging men to, to come and sign them to be mentors. Nine out of ten of the men that came to our booth didn't come to be a mentor. They came to be mentored. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Wow. And fatherhood is not taught. It's caught through a model relationship with another man. And I've spoke to single moms. Some of them say, I've been both mother and father, but they can only be one. And so, therefore, the father vacuum we have impacts pastors and the men in the church. And that's why Jesus, when he, when he came, he spent his time with the twelve men. Because the character of Christ, the, the goal of the Father was that they'll be conforming the men to the image of Christ. 
So that is not being imparted in the men of today. So we first, before we ask them to be a mentor, we take them through our mentoring program. It's called Lifestyle Mentoring, where we talk about their father issues. A lot of men have been abused. One in four men have lost their manhood to a man called father. And 90% um, of those are, are stepdads in their lives. And seven out of 10 ladies have lost their um, womanhood to a man called father. So therefore, it has marred a lot of their relationship with God the Father himself. And a lot of atheists, I have, I have a terminology that I say there's no such thing as an atheist. It's just someone with a marred father image. So if we can begin to mobilize men to be those godly men that we can see, then we will see marriages healed, we will see domestic violence disappear, and we will see all the human trafficking that we're running after now to mitigate that problem by rescuing these girls. It all comes from men. So all of our problems in society stems from men's sins of omission or commission. So people are listening and they hear this comment. Can you give me some specifics as it relates to how do men become good fathers? What, what would be some of the steps or the issues that they have to address? I know in terms of, I know they're fatherless, many of them, but what would they then begin to do to become the kind of man God wants them to be? Well, first we have men like myself who had a good father relationship we, and I've healed of anything that might have happened. But then now how could you come alongside another man and mirror what he's doing? Because Jesus had a pattern. He says, watch and see what I do. Then he says, you do it and I'll watch you. Then he says, you'll do it and I will be there to affirm you and bless you. And then you'll do it and then I leave and just pray and support you. So uh, we would encourage men to come alongside godly men that are modeling authentic fatherhood. So that's why the Bible says he places the fatherless in families. Hang with a man that has been healed and walk in the walk of Christ. Uh, there may be men watching now that would say, you know what, um, I agree with that. I'd like to participate. Could they become a mentor? Could you help them to understand how that would be? They would, again, make contact with you if they would like to help other men to know how to become a man. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I think that, again, uh, just it's cfdreamcenter.org, right? Mm -hmm. CFDreamCenter.org. It's on your screen, so make sure you go there and, uh, and reach out to Paul and, and be able to be involved in this because I think that it, it clearly those of us that are in and around the church, for years we've observed that there are more women in the church than there are men. That's right. And, and so that was the first indicative sign that we've got a problem. Um, are you seeing men come back and engage in this way that are making a difference in the local church? Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, there's a church in Sanford where um, the pastor was a woman for many years, for about 20 years. And she said the Lord told her it's time for the Daniels to come back, the, the men to step up. And in, in the urban in the community, 9 out of 10 men are raised by moms. So now when you see a male come into his role and he begins to now lead and guide, and now you have a picture of what a man's supposed to do. When a guy without a picture of what a role of father is, he just seeks someone and he can follow. And so now we're seeing men begin to rise up and begin to be the servant leaders. Instead of abusing their wives, they're now being a blessing. And we, we have one of the young men we've had mentored. Um, he, went and he, he got one of the young ladies pregnant, but because of what was modeled to him by another father in the community and seeing, we sat him down and was a model to him he became responsible and he married that young lady and he's raising his two kids, which is the anomaly in our inner city. Wow. I know that you have, through the years, you, you have uh, promoted a lot of events. And I, I know that of recent, you just had a very famous person come to Sanford, um, Joe Gibbs, who yeah. owns a racing team and was the former uh, NFL coach and Super Bowl winner in that. In fact, I was privileged to be at that event. You had about 400 men there that day. Um, how did that event, and what do you see the results of events like those kinds of things where you are addressing? Are, are the city taking notice and are churches taking notice? And again, are men stepping up? Is this the way we have to do it to see men take their rightful place in the church? 
Yes, a matter of fact, from that event, we've had a couple of churches that stepped up and said, I would like to start a, a men's mentoring program. I'd like to get the men in, involved in mentoring the youth. So we've also seen some men's groups begin to spring up. We lead a men's group there also weekly that is encouraging men to embrace God's game plan for their lives. And it's a slow process, but we're seeing God begin to trickle and turn men's hearts back to his patterns and principles. Yeah. I think one of the things that we've done, and I've been guilty as a former pastor myself and one that that's, gives leadership within the local church, that we've oftentimes, we've assumed that men know their role. We assume that doing church means that people get it. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it's, it's not worked the way we want it. We're seeing it now by the very facts and figures that you've, you have stated to us today. Um, if we wanted, or if there was a man that is saying and watching and saying, I wanna take some steps uh, that would help me be more engaged with my child, and I want to help other men, what would that look like if you were going to counsel me and I said, Paul, I want to engage more my son. How would I go about doing that? What would you encourage me to do? And letting these that are listening today sort of eavesdrop, help me, help us to understand the better way that we can engage with our sons and daughters. Well, well first of all, ask the man, what, um, how was he raised by his dad? How did his dad interact with him? Did his dad play with him or was his dad absent? Because, and has he forgiven his, and released his dad of what he has done? Because now if you haven't released your dad, whatever you, you've not released, you've retained in your life and now you're gonna pass on to your children. So you're saying forgiveness is a first step if it hasn't taken place? Yes, because- Why is forgiveness so important? Because a key point is, a case in point, uh, one of my, my ex-brother-in-law, was a young man that, that got involved. Um, his uncle back in New York was one of the other key events. Um, he got a gun from his uncle. He was asked to hold the gun while his uncle went and made a drug deal. And he was upstairs where one of our church members was, fooled around with a gun, killed her on the spot. Wow. And uh, my son was sitting five inches away from him. But a long story short, I was about to turn him into the law enforcement. And he said, could I go and see my dad? He was, uh, he was abused by his dad, his, his mom was abused by his dad, so he was a single um, fatherless kid mm -hmm. living with his mom. And the last words he heard when I took him to his dad's home was, I have no son. And so he went to jail and got released later on through that. But my sister married this young man and he did to her exactly what his dad did to him, to his mom. So uh, unless that is forgiven and released, you retain that same sin it's based out of John 20, 21, that you now retain that and you pass that on to your kids. So the first thing a dad needs to do is to recognize um, who he is and, and what wired him to where he is now. Recognize that, forgive that, release that, and then now impart new things, the character of Christ, to your children by spending time with them, loving their mom. The greatest gift a dad can give his children is to love their mom that Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. So that's modeling to them um, like my daughter-in-law reminds me, thank you for being a model to my son to now that she has that husband that she has with my son. So those are some of the key things that a dad can begin to do um, to make a difference. So you're saying that the old saying is true. It, it's, not, uh, it, it's not taught, it's caught. It's caught. And it's caught best. I think that we've lived in a society where everybody wants a program. You know, we want 12 steps, and I'm not against 12 steps, by the way, but 12 steps, if they're not, if they're not lived out, they're just, it's just a program, it's just a philosophical mm -hmm. thing, and you're saying that's not going to change the inner cities that, that are there in the midst of it. I, um, I, there's one more clip I want to show, and it was where, again, Jeff Triplett uh, calls for unity in our city uh, and other mayors to get involved, uh, because I just, again, believe that our viewers need to understand the power of this. Watch this one more clip, and we'll wrap up our time together with just some last encouragement for our community. Watch this, and we'll be right back. Today, I'm calling on all mayors in the state of Florida to join with me to challenge the suburban churches, the leaders and partners with the inner city urban churches who are willing to work together. The most important part of that is willing to work together. 
in unity to see our youth families and communities healed. They have churches now coming alongside um, uh, the inner city pastors and the youth to make a difference. We can literally see a revival in the inner city with churches, urban and suburban, black and white, brown, red and yellow, coming together as one. We are better together. We have 60 seconds. Give us a final encouragement to pastors, leaders, and people that are watching, Paul. What do we need to do and why do we need to do it? Jesus said it best in Ezekiel 22, where he says, we saw the plight of our nation, but I looked for one man to stand in the gap. I could have made an excuse and I said, I can't make a difference, but I stepped and made a difference. We, as the body of Christ, we can make a difference. If we all do one part, which is to stand in the gap for this fatherless generation. So even this Father's Day coming up this year, we can stand in the gap and reach out to our community. Paul Benjamin, thank you for making a difference in our town. It's because of that you've got a smile today because of the Central Florida Dream Center. You reach out to them. You connect with them. You encourage your pastor to get involved. You get involved with your children. Don't keep making excuses. We, the body of Christ, can make a difference. Well, thanks for joining us today here on Join Our Town. We'll see you next week. Until then, don't you ever forget it. Jesus loves you. He really does. Bye for now.